Oseo. Oseo. Here we are on Mother's Day. And a little bit of recap. Last Sunday, Melanie was here. And very dramatically, she told us all a story about how she was driving and a bee flew and buzzed into her ear. And so that started something with the bees. I followed that. I was inspired by that. And I had a Pearl and Getty poem of the two alienated bees, which I did. Also, Melanie uh, is a member of the uh, Yogananda Self-Realization Fellowship. So afterwards, I was rather able to follow that up. Pranava, that's a Sanskrit Hindu word. Pranava means humming. And what it means is that in, in the ear, in everybody's ear, you can hear this humming of the bees. And, and that stimulates the, um, um, the nerves, the nerve channels in the body that's going on all the time. So pranava, mm -hmm. like that. So I keep going with the bees here today and also with a mother. Uh, Ama. Ama is the Navajo word for mother, and the Navajo word for honey is Hana. So we have Ama, Hana. In Cherokee, Ama is water. Every time I drink water, I say Ama, and that makes the crystal form in it, <laughs> uh, like that. So uh, then Navajo has another word for mother, and that's Shima. Shima means Everyone, everybody around us who nourishes us, is, that's very beautiful. That's, that's all, Mother. A mother very, very, very big subject. <clears throat> In the ancient world that we, you know, modernly call the great goddess world, or in the courses I had, called the palace cultures and all that, where the bee goddess, the queen bee, and all of that is very much featured in the ancient Mediterranean. Demeter is of the bee Aphrodite, another queen bee. And in uh, Deuteronomy, um, the, the good book, uh, Deborah, Deborah also means the bee. So a lot of bees. And the Greek word for the bee is hy hymenop I can say hymenoptera. I like that. So hymen is a very big part of that. So her shrine there was, had the, the uh, priestess, her name was Hymen. Well, reminds me that Claudia and I studied um, Tai Chi from a woman named Hope Hyman. Um, and also, well, I should, should get to the, these artifacts here. So the veil, uh, also Hyman and the veil, all of these things figure. The word him seems to have derived from all of that also. So kind of going along with this theme, uh, what I have here, this is Claudia's painting. <laughs> she titled it Chapel of the Bees. And it's very, very all telling there. <laughs> and up here, I've replicated an ancient artifact from ancient Greece, like that of, uh, we'll say, you know, the queen bee. By the way, queen is an English French word from the Gaelic win, being the quickener of life. And so this is a replicate of an artifact uh, found in the vicinity that's near uh, south of Athens, Hymenitus. It's a small mountain which was a main source of honey. And speaking of honey, I go down here to this uh, pithos here. Now this is a small version. However, all of these vessels are symbols of the feminine. And the, whole, the holy, holy base, very large ones, very large ones. Um, they were filled with honey, and the body of a deceased person is put in there because they believed that the honey was a preservative. <clears throat> and so, it it is. I'm trying to say this is a symbol, uh, symbolizes the womb, the womb of the goddess, and her name also was known as Pandora, meaning all giving. Very interesting. And so it was also the vessel of rebirth and regeneration. And also, um, these were all made made by women, you know, by their in their guilds. They were all women guilds who made the pottery. And this one is unpainted from Greece, but the ancient ones they were suitably painted. 
And it's because of those paintings that actually, modernly we would say, have we come to learn very much, if not all, of the Greek mythology. Because that's where it was. It was um, painted on the pottery. And so this uh, pithos is a symbol of her womb of regeneration and rebirth. And along with this, uh, Claudia has written a poem. She has written many poems. And in this very beautiful book of her poems that Tim has designed and put together, like that, this is Claudia's painting on the cover. It's absolutely a wonder, wonderful book. And this very appropriate poem for the, to go with her painting here starts out by a piece from Rumi. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I will meet you there. Ode to honeybees. Oh, sweetest of bees, awaken to these rays which keep you warm. Attend your queen as she deposits her fertile eggs into their alchemical chambers. Drink up these agave blossoms until too tipsy to fly. Must sleep in the belly of sunflowers fields. I will meet you there. Listen to the buzz of your plight as you dream me into your sacred psyche. Plagued by mites, disappearing flower organs, and row after row of single crops that destroy your wild, crafted wisdom, you return with empty sacks. Abandon your hive and my hope. Deep within our dream relation where male and female thoughts pollinate, a native spore emerges, offers to grow a floral field in her native breast for you to hive in. Mm -hmm. We'll put no, aside from that, um, we belong to the Natural History Museum. Claudia is actually a docent whaler, <laughs> on the, on the whaler bo while watching boats. But this Tuesday, following in this, there's a, you know, giving a lecture there um, on the wild bees mm -hmm. and how the wild bees are doing good and the hive bees are not doing good. So we will certainly be there. And it just follows right in this bzzz, <laughs> buzzing thing. <laughs> oh, yes, I should, I should comment on, on this, how that this is figured with her rosette eyes, you know, and these uh, wings that give her her name, you know, the veil, literally, the veiled wing flyer, like that. So it's an amazing um, artifact there. Okay.